we need to stop overcomplicating AI with today's special guest, Mark A. Preston. Today's episode is brought to you by the bestseller Chat GPT Profits. This book is the missing instruction manual to get you up and running with Chat GPT in a matter of minutes. As a special gift, you can get it absolutely free at artificialintelligencepod.com forward slash gift or at the link right below this episode. Make sure to grab your copy before it goes back up to full price. Are you tired of dealing with your boss? Do you feel underpaid and underappreciated? If you want to make it online, fire your boss and start living your retirement dreams now, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to the Artificial Intelligence Podcast, where you will learn how to use artificial intelligence to open new revenue streams and make money while you sleep. Presented live from a tropical island in the South Pacific by best-selling author Jonathan Green. Now, here's your host. Now, Mark, I'm so excited to have you here today because every single person I talk to, every project that comes my way, they always think I need the most complicated AI setup. It needs 15 different parts or it needs all these moving parts or I need my own RAG setup. I need my own vector database. And we, there's something to be said for simplicity. I'm a believer that the more moving parts, the more opportunities there are for something to break apart. But I'd love to just start there, like what you're encountering with this is and why you think there's this tendency, especially with AI, especially with technology right now, to just go super complicated right out the gate. I'm going to say thanks for inviting me anyway. But I speak to a lot of CEOs and business owners, and I think they, they just see AI as a magic wand. And they just say, oh, we can basically replace everything. We can build this high profile thing. We can do this. But at the back of it, what are they trying to solve? Is AI right for that? And I think people, they, they try and overcomplicate things unnecessarily. And I think a lot of money and time and energy is being wasted into AI from businesses that there's just no need for it. Most every time someone comes to me with an AI problem, it's automation, not AI. They want to move data from one place to another place. They want to connect two tools. And because the definition of AI has become so ambiguous, it now seems to have morphed where it already was including machine learning. And now it seems to have absorbed everything in the automation space, everything in the sorting space. And it seems like more and more things are now defined as AI. Someone I was working with last week was using AI to separate lines inside a Google sheet. And I was like, you can already do that. That's why the lines have a numbers next to them. But it's this, suddenly it's become, I have a hammer, so I have to hammer everything. Every solution now, AI is that hammer. And very much, I'm just seeing this more and more, exactly what you're talking about, where people think that it's the solution to every problem. And it often is, just makes things more complicated. Sometimes it's solution, but not all the time. Yeah. They need to strip it right back, thinking, well, what can AI help me to streamline? I think the word streamline I use a lot when it comes to AI because it's not a replacement for things. It's how can you increase productivity? How can you increase certain manual tasks within the business that AI could do, leaving your resource to actually help push your business forward instead of spending hours and hours doing these manual tasks that AI could actually do within the business. There's the larger a company grows, the more it has these different disparate tools that came in at different points. Like we, we set up our CRM in the 80s, we set up our payment processor in the 90s, we set up our website in the 2000s. And more and more, what I'm seeing is a lot of companies have all of these different tools that have never talked to each other. And there have been solutions for 10 years, like different options for doing this, basically since Zapier became popular, it's kind of the first if this, then that tool. But integrations and API have been around for quite a while, but they haven't it seemed to have not entered a lot of people's awareness that there are third-party tools or ways of connecting two things. And that seems to be where I find the biggest inefficiencies that a lot of companies have is they go, we keep track of all of our customers on a spreadsheet. We keep track of all of our payment processing using this older tool. And there's, I feel the same way, like switching a major tool, like switching your CRM or switching your email client or any big change is always 
very stressful and something always goes wrong. Every time I move a website to a new host, something goes wrong. And it's always something different. And there's this big fear of kind of switching platforms or something going wrong that I think is very legitimate. How do we help people navigate that when they're thinking the answer to every problem is this AI is the solution to everything? For me, I like to turn it on its head. I like to turn the conversation on its head and ask, why is it you believe AI is the solution? Rather than me saying, look, you want that solution, this is the... Rather than trying to go against what they're saying, I want to understand why they believe it is the solution because 95% of the time, it's because they read something online that doesn't represent what they're trying to achieve. And I think once the conversation starts opening up with these people and trying to understand why they believe it is, then I find that's a better approach and a better way to actually get to the root source of what they actually need rather than trying to say, no, you're wrong type of thing. Yeah, let's dive a little bit into that idea. So let's say we're, you're talk, coming into someone, you're doing a console, you're talking to a company. How do you get them to switch and say, let's look at the problem first. What is the problem you're trying to solve? Rather than here's the tool and you're looking for a problem to solve with it. How can you switch when someone's looking at it backwards? I wouldn't have said that there's a reason, right? Somebody thinks that AI is the solution, right? And it's talking to them in a normal way to us problems you have. What are they? What's the impact to your business from solving them? So if we used AI to solve those problems, what actual impact to your actual physical business and turnover is it going to make? And I think once I start understanding and relating to monetary terms and get them to talk about it, then it suddenly becomes a whole new aspect in the business. It's not just Oh, I want AI because it means I can sack five people. It, it's, it's trying to, how can we increase productivity and revenue by streamlining it with AI? So one of the kind of confusing marketing things a lot of AI companies will say is, oh, we can increase your team's efficiency by 10% and this will save you this much money. But only if you fire one out of 10 people, but you can't really fire 10% of a person. So it's an imaginary number that sounds really good, but won't actually do a benefit because you still have to pay the person their salary. They're just going to take longer lunches. So it's one of the things that people forget to look at is how long does it take to transition to get used to a new process or a new tool? Even I'm a tech person, it can still take me sometimes months to get really used to always using the new process and not accidentally going to the old one. And I think that sometimes we forget there's going to be a transition period, which means productivity will actually go dip for a while people are switching over. And you also, sometimes people, there's a bit of a resistance, right? Because they're like, so you, but I've always done it the other way. I don't want to switch to the new way. So you also have it adds a little more time to that process. And then when you add that into the cost of switching to the new tool, sometimes there's not an ROI there. Just to increase the entire team's performance, like one tenth of 1% to go through six months and spend a couple million dollars, maybe it's not. Maybe the juice isn't worth the squeeze. Yeah, anything in business, you have to think about it logically. But you have to think about the cost versus the impact. And I use the word impact rather than return. Because after all, you want to use AI to in be impactful on something you're trying to do. And I think you can't just go out and blanketly say AI is going to increase your turnover by 10%. You can't because you don't understand the problem. You can't make blanket statements to people without first understanding what the problem is because lots of problems are very different. And that 10% might not be 10% in their specific circumstance and I feel as though that the honesty around AI sometimes gets confused to say it politely. Yeah, I feel that 
every company's in a race to make bigger and bigger promises. And that is why people think AI can do everything because a lot of AI companies are saying that. This one AI company saying, you can replace your support staff and you can replace your tech staff and you can replace this staff. And that's why people are starting to believe those things because they keep hearing that. And a lot of, when I talk to someone, I'm always like, let me just tell you what's possible and not possible. Before we jump into anything, you tell me what you think AI can do and I'll tell you if it can do it. And just starting from there because that usually helps her. Sometimes I go, just tell me your wish list. If AI could solve every problem, make a list of all of those problems. And everyone, once I dig into a problem, often it's different for every company. Like sometimes I remember this story that people could only remember 10 phone numbers. And this is a lot back where we used to have to remember phone numbers before cell phones. And then I met a lady who goes, I can remember 80. But that's because her job was to call people all the time. She called the same 80 people every week. So her efficiency wouldn't be affected as much by having a speed dial as anyone else. So sometimes people are, have created their own efficiencies that actually AI can't move the needle as much. And that's why it's important to have that investigation element before we jump into a tool. Because AI can do a lot of cool things, but it is the beauty of it is that you can build a custom solution or find a custom process for every company, every team, because Every single person I talk to, even every AI consultant I talk to, when I say, what does an agent mean to you? It's always a different definition. Same thing happens whenever I meet people that are personal branding experts. I go, what does personal branding mean? I never hear the same definition twice. I, never. <laughs> I always have to ask. I'm like, I don't know what you think it means. I always want to know. And it's because of the lack of definition of terms, it just, I think, waterfalls down because we haven't even decided what terms, you, even AI. When I was a kid, AI meant sentient robot. Now AI means smart word processor. It's such a drop in scariness, right? It's like no longer it has a laser eye. It just can help with spelling errors a little bit better. So it's really changed definitions. And I think that's why some people are still using the old definition. And they think a lot of people are still thinking AI robot, AI this, when it really just, it can just do a little bit better. I feel like the real definition of AI is that you can be a little more incorrect in your instructions and still get the response you wanted. Yeah. I think that there's AI is not something new. It's not just landed upon us in the past year or two. It's been in the background for a long time. And I think as it's progressed is you've got the, what I call a mathematical equations which people consider to be AI, then you've got these self-learning machines that's based on what you feed it. And based on the amount of information you feed it, it learns that, well, if we tweak, this is going to happen and that kind of thing. And I think there's what the term AI is so vast and when we strip it down, it, there's a lot of things. A lot of people I speak to, it thinks all AI is basically a content writing thing because of chat GPT, but it's not. I know people who are solving real issues within the businesses through AI by putting together a system like yourself do. And I think the terminology has been blown out of proportion and like you say, lots of people think about AI in lots of different ways. Yeah, there seems to be an inverse correlation between how interesting something is and how useful it is. Because the most interesting thing is AI videos, and they're far and away the least, least useful thing AI can do. And a lot of people come, a lot of people want to do AI social media. And the point of social media is that you can actually talk to people and actually form a connection. So as soon as you put AI in there, you literally remove the only good thing about social media, the only good element of social media is that there's a human element that you can talk to people. And I'm always fascinated when I see someone realize that like a comment on their post was an AI comment, they get really upset. Like they aren't just a little bit annoyed. It really bothers people because it feels like you've been tricked because it's like getting a compliment. You ever have that thing where you think someone's waving to you and then you realize they're waving to someone else after you wave back and it's yeah. embarrassing? That's what, I think. That's what it feels like. It's the worst feeling where you go, oh my gosh, I can't believe that person's waving to me. How cool. And then you look behind you and you go, that's the feeling of getting an AI comment. And how much worse is it when you get a post or even 
One of the things that makes me crazy is you can make a video now that just says the person's name at the beginning, even though you didn't really say it. So you think it's personalized, but it's not. It's really good in the short. It's really good until they figure it out. It reminds me of like those 80s comedies where the guy somehow has two dates on the same night and he thinks he can go back and forth between the two locations because there's no transportation. Kind. It always ends bad. It never works out. And whenever you do something that has a short-term gain, especially, and then people realize you didn't send that message, it really turns into, it really hurts their feelings. And it can actually turn you from neutral to a negative. It can really damage your reputation. So I feel like, all these, the thing that sounds interesting about AI is the worst use case. It can actually really damage your business, really damage your relationships, really hurt people's feelings. And there's so many good things, like you said, that AI can do. The most, the useful things is like, imagine if you never lost anything ever again. Imagine if you never had to look for a file again. Imagine if you could just find every photograph you'd ever taken right away. Or you were trying to think, what was the name of that person I went to high school with that did this? That's the really useful stuff but it's not as interesting. It's exciting as, look, here's an AI video of a car going backwards through a hamburger, right? That's exciting, unfortunately. So I do think you're exactly right that the business use case is really in the mechanics because every business has inefficiencies and for every business, they're different. So a great starting point, as you brought up, is to look at where are the inefficiencies? Where is the lost time? Where are people doing non-revenue generating tasks? Once someone starts to figure out, oh, these are the three people who are wasting this much time every week, what's the next step in the process? What do you tell people to do next when they go, okay, we've found the problem we want to solve. How do they figure out which AI tool, which process, or how they should approach solving and reallocating that time? I think that before I answer that question, I need to make the people that we're trying to make more efficient understand themselves that their job's not at risk, that by doing this, it means you can do all this other cool stuff over here instead of the boring stuff. We are just going to take that boring stuff off you. And I think that's a big thing that doesn't happen usually. And once you get that solved and actually piecing the puzzle together, the there is no right or wrong answer for me. It's just about, okay, understanding things more. It's understanding the intricacies of the business. It's For me, it's understanding, okay, if I streamline things and increase your revenue by, say, 10%, is your business cap actually capable of handling that on the other side? And all these other things, and I think myself, the actual nitty-gritty, putting the AI together, is only a small part of it for me. It's literally all this other stuff and understanding the big business mechanics behind it that's the important stuff. And once you understand all that, then AI might not be what they're looking for. And if it is, okay due to historical research and everything, is this is the solution. I'm really glad you brought up employee morale because there's this, with all the marketing out there about replace your employees, if people think they're training their replacement, they're going to slow roll or sabotage the process, because I would. If I thought I was training my replacement, I'm like, oh, I did. guess it can't work. guess AI's not where we thought it was. It didn't work out. And like they've unplugged the robot or something. We've seen that so many times. And it makes sense because you're trying to protect your job. A lot of people, there's a really large amount of fear if people think they'll be replaced by AI. And then to alleviate that fear, sometimes we hear, oh, you're not going to be replaced by AI. You're based by people that are good at AI. And it's like, it doesn't make me feel better. <laughs> it's, I don't know why you think that makes you feel better. I still lost my job. I have a family. So I think that's a really important thing is to let people know that this is about accelerating them, switching them to tasks they like, doing more, doing a morale task first. I love that. And I love looking at the holistic approach, which is, okay, can you handle 10 times more leads? What if you had 10 times more customers tomorrow? A lot of times I see a product will get a big break. They'll appear on a television show or a magazine and it would just get too much attention and their website crashes or they run out of product or they try and scale so fast that they have a problem with quality control. And so then they end up with a massive 
refund or recall issue. And sometimes scaling isn't as good as we think. Scaling too fast can be just as damaging as not scaling at all because there are always different components. I always, I'm always fascinated by food industries because a recipe at home for four people is not the same recipe you can use by for 400 people. You just don't 100x the ingredients. There's so many moving parts and trying to jump and scale, then you have to go, now I have to keep it shelf stable for a certain amount of time. That means I have to change the recipe, but does it still taste good? Does it still taste the same in three months? We're shipping it out now, so we won't find out for three months. And that's exactly what can happen when you jump and scale too fast. So I think that's a really good thing to think about is say, how much do you want to grow? And is this something that's actually going to be detrimental in the long term? Because you're just 10x your sales team, but you haven't 10x your delivery team. So sometimes an unevenness can cause a problem. I think that's very clever. What are some of the other pitfalls that you see when people are thinking about implementing a tech change, whether it's AI or automation or just switching software platforms or merging platforms? It's, I think it's understanding how to use them effectively. I'm a customer growth coach and I find that you go into businesses and there's an element of training. You can't just implement something brand new that nobody's ever used without the training behind it. It's not the magic wand. I just want to get across, if nothing else, AI is not a magic wand. It's a solution to a problem. And you need to understand that solution and you need to understand how to use it in your business to effectively push it forward. And I think that's the missing part I see many times is the the lack of training within a business because effectively they bring in somebody like yourself who builds something and implements it in, then a lot of time it's just dumped on them. There's no one in that business that actually has a technical expertise to understand it. Now, who's going to maintain it? How do you know if it's doing the thing you want it to? If it's not, how do you tweak it? And I think all these missing elements that it's not just uh, let's build it once and forget about it. There's all these other aspects to it within a business. Yeah, I think that's really a good point. Remembering that you want your team to be able to use it and that I think the biggest problem with AI, especially with ChatGPT and like all the kind of similar tools is that there's no onboarding process. They're like, here's a blank page, figure it out. And that's the worst onboarding print you can possibly give someone. So it takes time to understand what's possible and also what's useful. Because if you ask ChatGPT or any of the AIs, what are 10 of the things you can do? It will list 10 things that are not useful. I can give you a recipe for this and I can write you a song. I'm like, that's not going to, how is that going to help me at my job? So onboarding is so important. And I know that for a lot of softwares, onboarding makes or breaks. They're like SaaS companies. Like if you don't have a good onboarding, people don't use the tool. They quit before the free trial is over. It's so critical. And I'm from the generation of, I'm not reading the instructions. I'm not going to the onboarding. Like I will, I don't need that. And that's why my VCR always flashed 12 for my entire childhood. My dad was the same way. We never figured it out. I always get lost. So there is this really critical component, which is the human component, because if you don't tell people what it can, it can't do, how to use it and give them time to get used to it. Even worse is what if you train one person in the office that knows how to use that tool and then that person leaves. So you don't want to have the key man problem, as they say. So I really love that. This has been an amazing conversation. So thank you so much for so much of your time. I really appreciate it, Mark. Where can people who want help with business growth or want to see some of the amazing things that you're doing, connect with you online and see the projects that you're working on. And maybe they're a great fit for working with you. I'm going to say, just search my name, Mark A. Preston with A in the middle. And I'm on LinkedIn and X most of the time. Perfect. And my website is markapreston.com. Oh, keep going. Do it again. Sorry. I'm going to say you can find me by searching on Google, Mark A. Preston, my website's markapreston.com, or just search Mark A. Preston in either X or LinkedIn, and you'll find me. If you're connecting with me on LinkedIn, please do send a personalized message saying you've heard me on this podcast, 
I don't think you're just an AI robot. Amazing. Thank you so much for being here for another amazing episode of the Artificial Intelligence Podcast. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Starting with AI can be scary. ChatGP Profits is not only a bestseller, but also the missing instruction manual to make mastering ChatGPT a breeze. Bypass the hard stuff and get straight to success with ChatGPT Profits. As always, I would love for you to support the show by paying full price on Amazon. We can get it absolutely free for a limited time at artificialintelligencepod.com forward slash gift. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Artificial Intelligence Podcast. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. We'll be back next Monday with more tips and tactics on how to leverage AI to escape that rat race. Head over to artificialintelligencepod.com now to see past episodes, leave a review, and check out all of our socials.